To tell us her story and the power of listening, please welcome Imogen Baxter from Sendall. So hi, I'm Imogen, and it's a pleasure and an honor to be with you here today. And I run communications and also the sales team at Sendall. Cool. So there's a slight irony in the title of this talk in that you're all listening and I'm just talking. Um, but if you can roll with me for a little bit, it, it has a good reason. Is there a timer? Yeah. Um, and the reason is, is because when we first launched Sendall, and actually even before at Two Share, we actually weren't very good at listening. We were actually really bad. And there's a really good reason for that, and that's usually because we think we're the most important person in the room. And we take that into everything that we do, which is business as well as interpersonal relationships. And the, ultimately, the best lesson that we learned at Sendall was that you have to have really big ears, and you have to be able to shut up. So Sendall actually, correctly, as John said, began life as the delivery service for this really rad sharing community called TwoShare. And TwoShare's whole purpose was to help people give things away that they no longer needed to somebody else for free. The model didn't really work. But it, if it did, this is how it would have worked. You have something that you no longer need and you want to give it away because it's like, you know, maybe you've got clothes, you've got an old cup, you just don't like it. So you snap a picture and you put it online, and someone else around Australia can take that from you for free. And the platform was a frictionless sharing community. And Sendal was just the smart logistics provider that really smoothed that transition. We had funding, we had a liquid marketplace, things would typically be shared in 24 hours, but we didn't really have a business model at all. And it turns out there's not that much money in free stuff. Go figure. Um, and so Touche failed. So when we were umming and ahhing, can we turn it around? Can we bring in a new business model? How do we really make this work? Because we were still so passionate about the idea of all items seeing their full lifespan. We realized that people were hacking our platform. And when we really looked at it, people, what people were doing is, in effect, listing stuff simply to give it away to someone that they knew. And when we thought about it really deeply, we realized it's because the delivery service solved a much more painful problem. And that's the national pastime of queuing at the post office. And so when we decided that Touche didn't really have a life ahead of it, we thought, OK, well, we've managed to hit upon this idea. And it's this like delivery thing, and it's completely carbon neutral. We kind of have a rough idea of how it works. We've got product market fit, because people are already hacking the platform to use it. So we'll just go full steam ahead and just see what happens. Um, terrible idea on reflection, um, because we didn't really question any of our assumptions. We pretty much thought, we know how it works. People have used it thousands of times. Sure, it's just going to be a great idea. We didn't even think about the segment we were addressing. We just thought, it's a consumer product. Like, let's just see how it goes. And the crucial bit here is that we, we just weren't listening. We were so excited by our own idea. Like, out of this failed thing that we so loved, this like, great idea had sprung out. And we were so ready to give it a go. And the enthusiasm was just palpable. And we totally drank our old Kool-Aid. And we thought we were innovation and disruption. We thought we were great. Um, and this is my favorite, this is like my favorite worst fail of ours. And this was that we decided that the future of parcel delivery was labelless. You shouldn't need labels. Printers are dead. Um, and so what we came up with was this idea that we had code words, and the courier would bring a, a label, and they'd match the label to the parcel, and they'd stick it on, and off it went. But in reality, what happened was small businesses were using Sendall, and they had 20 parcels to send. And the courier would turn up with 20 labels. And you can guess what they did. It was just like, this one, this one. And they all went in the wrong direction. Not only that, turns out people don't really want to call their customers festive socks. And we had ones that were like Happy Monkey, Purple Pickle, and although we thought it was really cute, our customers were like, this is not cute, this is really embarrassing, you have to stop. But we were like, no, this is an innovation. It is not an innovation if you are annoying your customers. And so in the end, we got rid of labelless delivery. And actually what we learned, because we kept coming up against these things, is we had to just shut up. And when we shut up, in effect, you're forced to listen. And what we realized is that with Sendall, the very beginning of Sendall, and really this was only in the first month or two, we'd created 
kind of a service that was 80% good for 100% of the market. And we really needed to create something that was 100% good for 80% of the market. And once we'd realized that, this was like, a, like angels were singing in the background. We totally understood what we were supposed to be doing. Um, we realized that actually the Sendle service was for small business, and it was for people. When we really looked at it, we went back, we went back through our customer database. Who are the people that are really, really happy? Well, it's people like Keller, who runs this amazing business called Lucas Loves Cars, and their whole thing is about finding toys with wheels. It sounds pretty simple, but it's so niche, and her customers are so happy. And it's also for people like Simon and the team from Who Gives a Crap. Does anyone here who use Who Gives a Crap toilet paper? Yeah, statistically, like half of you will or something. It's crazy. And who gives a crap do 100% recycled tissue products like Lou Roll, and they donate 50% of the profits to WaterAid. And they use Sendle. And so when we realized, OK, small business, it's all about small business, we basically went back and thought, our purpose doesn't really fit anymore. Our purpose at the time is a bit daft. It was to help make sending a parcel as easy as sending a text which for small businesses like, I mean, it's like, it sounds fine, but it doesn't really feel juicy. It didn't really feel big enough to encompass all of the aspirations as a small business. And so what we did is we thought, what do we actually want to do with our business? And we pretty much used this model. And that's, we help X do Y by Z. If you've ever struggled to communicate what you do as your business, this is kind of the foundational stuff. So Sendel's purpose is this. We help small business thrive by making parcel delivery simple, reliable, and affordable. Because that's actually all small businesses want. When they've spent hours crafting this beautiful pot to then put in the post and send it off, what do they want? They want it to be really simple because they're time poor. They want it to be reliable because please don't break it, and if it does, please help me. And they want it to be affordable, because logistics is typically the second biggest spend after the actual products themselves. And it's a total grudge payment. So that was our purpose. And with our purpose renewed, suddenly everything started to make sense. We went back completely through our product and through our entire service top to bottom. And we segmented our customer base into three, kind of three broad swathes. And with those customer segments, we mapped our entire customer journey again. And from that, we basically realized that, sure, we'd identified all the right pain points in the service, like booking still sucked, tracking still sucked, all of this stuff still sucked. But the way that we'd prioritized them was often really wrong. And so when we went back and we thought, what's actually really time consuming for a small business? If you're a consumer, you book one in, typing in the instructions, like where it wants to go, if you want to leave it on the doorstep, takes 30 seconds. But if you're a small business that's booking 20 of these, like that's a lot of your time, and it's really boring. And man, do you start to resent the people who make you do it. And we don't want to make anyone resent using our service. So instead, and this is a bit sad because genuinely this is just a tool to help you book via an Excel spreadsheet. But now that I know how much time it saves, I can get so excited about a tool that helps you book via an Excel spreadsheet. And our businesses do too. And so when you focus on things that actually matter for them, you start to, save, start to kind of solve real pain points for people. Life just gets better. We also realized we hadn't actually been talking to our customers. We had a little bit on and off because Generally, if someone wanted to speak to us, we'd call them, we'd have a chat. We were still small enough that we could do that. But we hadn't actually polled all of our customers or surveyed all of our customers in a really methodical way. And so what we did when we had this kind of like blinding moment, we went back to them and we said, OK, you said that you're a small business. What do you need? What, what do you need from Sendle that we're not giving you already? And the signal was extraordinary. Out of all of this noise of, like, we want you to do this, we want you to do this, a bunch of really key things stood out. And this was the absolute clearest, which was, you don't have a product that I really need for my business in order for you to be useful. And it was a 500-gram satchel. Who knew that was so important? Apparently it was. And so within six weeks of closing the survey off, we went back, we had, we had researched, we prototyped, we put a beta test product into the market, one that was more competitive on price than the post office, plus it went and picked up for you for a minimum order quantity of one, which for small businesses when you're just starting is so cool. The other thing that we realized from small businesses is that they are time poor, but they're also so invested in their business. 
Like, really, it, it's what makes them tick. If they have a bad day at work, they take that home, because often they work from home. So how do you make that kind of really, how do you smooth that? How do you make it really beautiful? And for us in logistics, with so many moving parts, things are going to go wrong. And so what you need is a really smart team behind the scenes who want to solve those problems for your customers. And so for us, we have a team of about 30 people who are our support team. And we call them customer happiness champions because they are quite genuinely the happiest people you will ever meet in the world. And to get to that team of about 30, we interviewed hundreds, if not thousands, of people. And it's still ongoing to whittle down to that team of 30. Really smart, really proactive people. And very genuinely, this represents our team. Each, I love emojis. And each of these emojis represents someone on our team. I'm the history graduate in there. And what you'll notice is that only two of them, that one's hidden, had ever worked in logistics before. Like, we were not logistics people. We were brand new to this space. But what we had was diversity, and we had an interest. And we had a real passion for small business that just totally shone through. Um, and so in the end, we decided, all right, if we want to speak to our customers, because listening to them, I mean, who has the right ideas about what you should be doing? It's them. Similar to how the last presentation talked about, you need to know your customers, you need to reverse engineer that. Often the best way to get the best information is just to ask them. And so for every pickup and delivery that we do, we ask for qualitative and quantitative feedback. People can rate us, people can leave long-winded essays, people can leave like five snarky comments. Whatever they want to do, we get it. And if it's negative, we read all of it. And if it's below a seven on a like, rating scale of one to 10, we reply pretty much to every single one. Because we know that if you have a bad experience, you're going to go tell people. We'd rather you tell us and us fix it than you tell your friends. It's just smart. It takes 10 seconds, but it saves your reputation. And it's actually the best learning opportunity. Because business used to be like this, which was kind of your business in the middle. You'd maybe meet a customer. You'd grab it. There are ghosts. Um, you'd meet a customer and you'd grab it and you'd interact with them on a really bilateral basis. And that's kind of how it worked because before social media, like, there was no real other way to do that. But now we're seeing that actually your customers are connected to your customers and they're connected to your customers' customers. And particularly in something like Sendor where the recipient and the sender are both connected by tracking emails and accounts set up, it's really important they communicate with all of them. So to really understand that ecosystem, um, it's, it's basically really important for you to focus on the customer journey, not only of your customers, but of your customers' customers. And so what Sendle does at the moment, and kind of what we're showing is successful, is that over 50% of our new business comes through a referral. And we don't have, a re have an incentivized referral model at all, which is kind of, well, it's really humbling, firstly. But it's also really exciting because it shows that there's power in really considered service. So as a takeaway, if at the end of this talk you leave with nothing except from perhaps you're going to go home tonight and you're going to think, OK, if I can just shut off the noise for two minutes, if I can just be quiet for two minutes and I can hear one more valuable thing from a customer of mine, I'll leave the stage happy. Thank you very much.